All right, and we are live with another episode of Mentor Minutes, where I take your questions and questions from leaders around the world, and we deal with some real-world situations and try to apply some theory and principles of leadership and get them into play to make your life easier from a leadership perspective. If you're coming to this video late, not a problem. There's tons of good information here, but you can always check these out on YouTube and through my podcast. I'd love to have you subscribe to either one of those channels as well, and it's an easy way for you to take this stuff on the go. A lot of leadership is just putting exercise. It's almost like a muscle, putting some exercise behind those situations so that you can kind of think through things. So when situations come up in your workplace or um, when you're presented with particular challenges, you have kind of a toolkit ready to go. So it's a good exercise to just listen to these and kind of get some practice working through some leadership questions and struggles that other people are having so that when you face those same situations, you are all ready to go. So as we queue up some um, some viewers here, and uh, I would encourage you to drop, down, drop your questions down into the comment section and we'll start tackling those. Mohammed, so good to see you here. And uh, I wanted to kind of have a, uh, I'm starting to do kind of threads, topics to have kind of threads while we wait for questions and in between the questions as they come up in these live sessions. And today's thread is about team building. Now, team building is one of those, I almost want to say classic leadership topics and, and presents kind of one of the struggles of leadership. So much of leadership uh, training isn't done because everybody acknowledges that something is important, so they just assume that you're going to be better at it. They know that team building is important, delegation is important, so you don't get any training as a leader because your boss says, well, they know it's important, they're going to figure it out. But all of these areas are skill sets, and as with any skill, you need to work at it. You need to have some instruction. You need to find some what things that work for you. Team building is a classic one. Everybody knows that team building is important. It's a huge um, motivator for teams and a huge benefit as far as getting things to move along quickly and getting the most out of your team. So your ability to tap into those team elements will go a long way to determining how successful you are as a leader. So the first principle from a team building perspective is you need to get clear on what the mutual goal is that everybody is working towards. What's the goal of the department? What is the goal of the organization itself? Get crystal clear on what that is. If it is increasing sales, increasing profitability, providing exceptional customer service, Find some sort of metric and put a goal on there of a 10% improvement, a 15% improvement. It's imperative that everybody knows what they are working towards. The reason is, is that cuts through a lot of the friction that people have from an individual perspective. So people are self-seeking, you know, self-motivated. And so what happens is, is a lot of times what is in the best interest of an individual isn't necessarily in the best interest of the group. And so you want to break that down by talking about those mutual goals that people have or that the organizations have. Then you tie in how everybody is an individual contributor to that goal. I draw the example of an American football team. The goal is to outscore your opponent. Now within the team, you have an offense that scores points and you have a defense that inhibits the other team from scoring points. Both aspects are important. And within those two divisions, shall we say, there are different players that have different skill sets that help to all accomplish that goal. So what you want to do is you want to be able to show how every individual on your team contributes to the overall goal. Now that may be that IT is supporting everybody with the right technology and computers that work so that they can do their job really well. It might be that finance is maintaining the proper flow of cash through the organization and from outside the organization so that you have funds to be able to continue to function. Customer service is taking care of the customer so that they're satisfied, so they tell other people about it, so you increase sales. All of those things, it's important that people understand why their role is important within the organization and how it ties to those goals. When people are secure in those things, it's easier for them to come together and to help other individuals in the mutual accomplishment of that goal. Making that personal is the first real key to getting team building. Teams have goals, so call those out. 
talk about them in conversation about what the goals of the organization, what the goals of the department are, and how people's individual efforts tie into those. And that's a huge aspect of team building. So team building is kind of the topic I'm kind of weaving through, but I do want to have it open for any questions that you have out there, any struggles that you're facing in your leadership, any day-to-day -day stuff that you're not looking forward to, uh, frustrations, any of those things, drop them down into the comment section. I'm happy to field any questions that you have and we'll get this ball rolling and get a kind of conversation going there. The other thing in regards to team, hey, sweet, so good to see you here. It's been a while. Um, the other thing that you want to highlight is with team building is not just the similarities. Too often we get um, tied into the similarities of a team. You also want to highlight the diversity within that team as well. Again, drawing on that American football example, you might have a 350-pound lineman who is very different than your 195 pound speedy wide receiver. Very different, one's fast, one's slow, one's big, one's smaller. But those diversity elements tie together towards the goal. That's where you find so many of those similarities. It isn't similarities in background, in traits, in skill sets, in demeanor. It's similarities in how they affect the overall goal of the organization. Tying those things together is important because what happens is if you, you highlight the similarities between everybody too much, then it becomes one of those things where those diversity elements and those, those differences get called out and create actually a break in the teamwork as opposed to looking at that as an opportunity to bring things together a little bit more. So one of the big mistakes I see with leaders who are trying to, high, to, to work on team building is they are highlighting the similarities and not talking about the differences. Everybody sees the differences. So talk about how those differences actually help the overall team accomplish its goal. Jean, good to see you here. So again, any questions anybody has, drop them down. I'm happy to field those questions and, and hopefully set you on a little bit of a, a different track and, and on an improving track for you. The other thing in regards to team building, when you set out on this, is to get an understanding of the battlefield, shall we say, for lack of a better term. You want to know who your allies are out in your department. Who are those individuals that are always working together, that have a smile on their face, that help pick up their teammates um, when they're down, who call out their teammates' um, accomplishments? Uh, you, you know, I, I don't need to describe it too much. You know who fosters teamwork out there. And you also want to know who doesn't foster teamwork out there. All right, you want to know who's not going to be on board when you're doing some of these rah-rah things as far as team building is concerned. Who are going to be those people that you need to spend a little bit more time with? All right, both, in, both sets of individuals, I want to say, are, are not inherently bad. It just informs you as to the steps that you need to take, the, the discussions that you need to have down the road for each of these individual or for each one of these individuals to accomplish that overall goal. So it may be that you don't have to spend as much time with Jean because Jean is on board and, and he's somebody that is going to uh, be, be a, a, an easy person to get along with as far as team building is concerned. However, Cameron is your problem child and you're gonna have to describe to them or to him a little bit more about what it is that you're looking to accomplish, what the overall goals are, how these things tie in. You're gonna to have to reinforce some of those elements that we've already talked about in regards to team building with that particular troubled individual who's kind of a saboteur as far as teamwork is concerned to try to bring them around. You don't always wanna focus on the negative, all right? You often wanna focus on your strengths and you'll flip flop a little bit between these as you, as you work through building a little bit of a better team. But simply acknowledging and knowing who is somebody who you can lean on to help you in these team building efforts and who are those individuals who you need to spend a little bit more time bringing around. That's something that's gonna be hugely important for you as you move forward in this. The other thing, um, another thing that I wanted to mention in regards to team building is what has worked out before for you? What, what in the past has brought people together? When did the team come together? Oftentimes, it's during a struggle or some sort of crisis people come together. They can also fall apart. You want to know when those, th those instances occurred as well. So when have you most felt like a team? Is it around the holidays when you're doing potlucks, for instance? 
There's all kinds of those instances where your team came together and see what that can inform you as far as what to do in the future. Good to see everybody jumping on here, Sandy, Lisa, Christina. Um, so look for those opportunities to make informed decisions on what to do again. So if it was a crisis, what, not that you want to foster crisis to create teamwork, but what was it about that that brought everybody together? Was it the importance of the situation for the organization? That can be something that you want to highlight down the road for everybody so that they understand the importance of what it is that they're doing. Is it that they were helping somebody out? They were learning something new. Sometimes you have an all hands on deck and everybody has to go to the warehouse to help ship orders during the holiday season. That can be those sorts of things that bring the team together. Where are those opportunities where you can offer shadowing in that particular example? What has worked in the past in regards to team building? When did you feel like you were most part of a team? And then what does that inform you to do in the future? Could it be potlucks? Those are, those are all those simple fun things where you're celebrating a holiday and everybody's bringing in a dish. That can be something where everybody's dressing up in a, you know, in sports jerseys or something like that. Can you do more of that? But look at what has worked in the past. Too often we look for mistakes, we look for problems, we don't look at those successes and try to inform our decisions on those successes as well. That's something that can inform a lot of things, not just team building, but a lot of things that you deal with in the organization. Sharif, good to see you here, Sandy. So anybody that has any questions, any struggles, it doesn't have to be about team building, anything that's going on in your work day, any struggles, any problem employees that you're dealing with, problem bosses, that sort of thing, go ahead, drop those questions down. Otherwise, I will keep going kind of on my thoughts on team building. I wanted to kind of tie everything together a little bit today um, with that. The other thing, and, I, and I, I hit on this as far as the similarities and the diversity and the differences and, and bringing both of those things out and talking through those and how those affect the team. What I also want to mention is the individual differences. Do not treat your team like robots. All of your team members, and this goes for general leadership as well, but again, very much applies to team building. You wanna be able to address people's strengths and weaknesses in regards to this. The classic example is those introverts, those people that aren't the life of the party. Be respectful to them. Find a way for them to help individuals in a way that actually works for them. It may be pulling together reports, for instance. You can have that for you know people that have a very analytical mind. They can pull the reports for everybody. So they are serving the team, they are serving other members. It just isn't necessarily in that sort of gregarious, outgoing way, but you want to highlight and work with the strengths of every individual. That's how you get the most out of people. Putting people into a box and creating robots is something that makes it easy to manage a department, but you will not get the best results. And where this comes out a lot as far as team building as well, because that's where the individual becomes part of an, an overall group. Kimberly, Sharif, lead by example. And that's, that's, abs that's actually my last comment on here is leading by example. So I'll go ahead and kind of jump ahead, Sharif, since you, you put it out there. As with everything in leadership, your example sets the tone for so much of this. So how are you working with other individuals? Are you grabbing tasks or responsibilities and then just shuffling off to a meeting all by yourself and not bringing anybody along? Bring people along. Karen, good to see you here today. Bring people along with you to meetings. Invite them in to work on reports and presentations. Give them a window into what you're doing. Find ways to help them. Managing by walking around. MBWA, it's a, it's a principle of leadership. One of the main aspects of that is your ability to hear things that are going on and to offer your support, offer your help as it comes up. That can be huge as far as developing some teamwork. One of the big things is leaders talk about teamwork, but then they work alone. Don't work alone. That's something that can absolutely kill your efforts as teamwork because they're looking for you as an example. Look for ways, and I talk about this a lot as well, look for opportunities to assign tasks to two individuals. We often assign tasks to one particular individual. Again, that makes it easier in a certain respect, but it doesn't foster that teamwork. Assign tasks to two people. Now, we know what's gonna happen. They're gonna split the task, they're gonna go work together, work alone, and then they're gonna bring it together. But it is that bringing of things together that creates even just a little bit of teamwork, and it sets the tone for how you work and how you work together in your particular department. 
Um, Lisa has a question for us, and then what's the best practices for introducing a new team member into an existing team who may not have experience with a team setting workplace? The main thing is getting to know one another, Lisa, if, if flat out. So you can look for team building games. One thing that um, in creating a department, opening a hotel here in Las Vegas a, almost a decade ago now, my goodness, um, one of the things is we started with a team of three and it eventually grew to 120 is we played two truths and a lie. So it's a game where you list three things about yourself and two of them are true and one of them is a lie. And so you would have people that, you know, you come up with some really fun stuff, but it tells people about you. And what we did is we actually stored all of those. So you may have been one of the first three people that joined the team, but we kept your two truths and a lie. So you, all the new people could take the quiz in regards to you. So it was a simple little game. Everybody was trying to see what the new person's two, you know, one lie was. And the, a new person was finding out about the other individuals and trying to guess what their lie was. But it was a great conversation starter because what happens is that's an introduction to everybody in a way that can create, um, that, 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 that can create follow-up conversations, which is what you want. So the best way, it, it, it's team building. Everybody's got experience working in sports teams, in PE classes, um, even in schooling. So everybody's familiar with a team dynamic. The most important aspect of that is people getting to know one another. That's another thing that I had on, down here, is find ways to bring the team together. And when you get to know somebody a little bit better, it's easier to communicate, it's easier to understand, and it's easier to work together and catch those triggers on when you might need to help somebody and when you can ask them to help. So I hope that helps out. That was a great question um, to kind of flow along here, Lisa. Thank you for that. Um, the other thing um, that I wanted to mention is the, the creation of, it may not work. I mentioned you know assigning tasks to two individuals. But one of those ways that you can expose people and have people get to know one another is creating backups. So it may be that I'll use a retail environment. You may have a shoe department and a sports equipment department. But you know what? You, those don't have to always be distinct. Have some of the people shadow another department. That creates a backup for you. So if you have a bunch of people out on vacation or a bunch of people out sick, you know who you can put over in that other area. But it also creates a little bit more conversation, a little bit more dialogue, more communication, which will lead to smoother transitions from customers as they move between those different departments. That can be something that, that helps out. But find ways to get people to shadow or back up. That's another easy way to get people to talk together, work together a little bit more as they share their knowledge. And what you're doing is you're putting people in natural student teacher roles and then you can flip that when you flip those departments. So they're comfortable either listening if they're an introvert or if they're gregarious, they're comfortable in that environment. So you're, you're, you're stretching them just a little bit in their comfort zone, but again, you're creating that dialogue and that's what's huge as far as creating that teamwork. Um, or not all, keep motivate your team members is right or not all the time? Uh, great question, Sharif. So that is, you know, should you be motivating your team regularly? Um, you do need to be addressing motivation on a regular basis. It is best when you can do it in a systematized way. So people have an expectation that you are going to be talking about, um, uh, I, I guess what you're going to be doing is, you know, working on peer pressure as a motivator by having metrics up all of the time. That's something. What you don't wanna get into, and I think that's what you're getting at with this question, is where you are constantly incentivizing people to do their jobs. You hear that all the time and you come through your, you know, your head if you're in an incentive-based environment that, you know what, I pay people a base salary as it is. I shouldn't have to incentivize them to do their job through sales contests, that sort of thing. What you want to do in those instances, it doesn't, it's not necessarily bad to offer those incentives, but what I tell people is, is you want to rotate those through. So change it up a little bit. So if it's a sales environment, what are you incentivizing? Are you incentivizing add-on sales? So multiple sales. Are you incentivizing the overall size of the order? You can move that, you know, move the needle on that. You can incentivize particular products that you wanna focus on 
or products that you need to move. You can focus on old inventory, for instance. So you kind of cycle through the incentives. What that does is that builds up a skill set. You're giving people a carrot, but you want to be working on deeper things as well. And so that's where you have those individual conversations where you find out what motivates your team, each of the team members. And so you can address those things. So you get a little bit at the heart of it. One of the things that's important when we talk about motivation is that you realize where that word comes from. The first part of motivation is motive. What is their motive for working with you? They can get a job anywhere. Why are they coming to you? For a paycheck? Sure. But again, they can get a paycheck anywhere. What is it about your environment that fits with them? And that's what you really want to highlight to go to a level deeper. Is it that they like the industry that you're in? Do they find that rewarding? Do they find the message of the organization rewarding? Do they like the team that they're working with? Do they like you as a boss? What is it about the job that makes them come back to it as opposed to finding something new? Because everybody can go find a job somewhere else. So look for those things. I'm not averse to motivating on a regular basis. I think it's important that you keep it refreshing that, but it's what you are refreshing that matters. If you can get to those base levels of motivation that really drive people, that there is their motive for coming into work every day, that's something that can be hugely rewarding and is something that builds so you don't have to be hitting it all the time. Incentive-based you know, motivation, that's something that you really want to be spinning through and working through different aspects of it to make it really work for you. Um, a great question, really appreciate it. Um, Mark has the next question. In a volunteer setting, it should be you doing backup. Um, in a, you know, not necessarily, Mark. I don't, I don't, I don't like getting into the, you know, youth versus experienced role. Um, there's aspects of that that, um, there's dynamics that, that are natural that you have to, to address, but I wouldn't necessarily put a label on it. I think what you'll also find is that those individuals with the most experience can get a whole lot of, of further experience by backing up a brand new organization. Those with experience have the risk of getting stuck in a rut. Those with, you know, with youth have a, the detriment perhaps of having too many new ideas and not being able to get onto anything. So you want to have that experience and expose those to different areas. That's a great place to get knowledge sharing. So I would look to do backups everywhere. Bringing, you know, bringing new people on, you know, you might say that millennials, and I don't necessarily think this is the case, but you might say that millennials um, want to be involved in more varying aspects of things. I think we all do to a certain extent. They might just be a little bit more vocal about it, but I think drawing that experience from not the youth, but from your most experienced individuals into other areas of the operation could be huge as far as the learning that takes place and it mixes things up, which is, is one of the big problems as far as motivation of more experienced workers is they get stuck in that rut. Um, and next comment is, uh, you know, a team that is working with you, not for you, delivers better results. Absolutely, Nick. Um, I, 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 can't, I, I can't agree with that more. If you're not spending at least one hour out on the floor, out in the trenches with your workers a week, if you're not doing at least that bare minimum, you are missing out on the example that you set and you're missing out on a ton of information that you can use to make better decisions down the road by seeing what is actually taking place out there, making yourself a resource, working in the trenches with people, that's something when they see leaders rolling up their sleeve, that's something that brings everybody together and is a huge motivating factor for an organization and for a team that's, that's working together and a high performing team as well. They wanna see the impact of their leader on the front lines. Great comment, Nick, I love it, love it, that's great. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention in regards to team building, again, if you have questions, drop them down. Otherwise, I'll keep kind of going on this thread of team building that we have. The other thing is to have fun. Study after study after study shows that people come together more when they're having an enjoyable, fun experience. It's a motivating factor. And what happens is, is that people discover things about one another. 
And it's that understanding of individual traits that helps bring a team together. When I know more about Nick or when Nick knows more about Cameron, it is easier for us to come together and to work together because we have that baseline understanding. I'm not going to take something that he says and he's not going to take something that I say the wrong way because we understand each other better. And it's like, that wouldn't make any sense that Cameron would be coming down on me like that. Um, he must be just time pressed or direct or whatever it is. But fun is a huge aspect of bringing people together. You think about it, for many of you, you've gone out on bowling outings or dinners away or some other sort of team building fun activity. And it's surprising how you interact with different individuals than you would if you were in uh, the work environment and you usually discover things about other individuals. All of a sudden that shy person that's, that was stuck in the corner is a phenomenal basketball player or a phenomenal bowler. And everybody gets to, you know, they get to expose that sort of uh, skill and everybody gets to see that and it creates, again, those conversations. So fun is another thing that you want to work on if you're working on team building. And that's why those team building exercises that you see and uh, that's on here. If you want to do, you know, more team building exercises, just Google it. I can come up with ideas all day long, but you will find the top 50 team building activities and almost all of them have an element of fun because people's guards come down, you see a little bit more, people are a little bit more engaged when they're having fun with those activities as well. So look for those opportunities. And what I want to tell everybody in, in regards to team building is that it is not a one-off thing. Similar to motivation that we just talked about here a few minutes ago, it is something that you want to refresh on a regular basis. I am a big fan of taking a simple team building activity, like two truths and a lie. That doesn't take in a team of 15 people, that doesn't take more than 10 minutes to conduct. Those 10 minute activities, once a week, once every couple of weeks, even once a month, Doing those on a regular basis helps bring everybody together and that weirdness and awkwardness that everybody has with team building activities goes away when that becomes a regular thing that happens in the operation. So do these things on a regular basis. Work on this team building as a regular basis and what happens is, is you see little improvements and then it starts getting greater and greater as you go along. As with many things, when you make the right decision in leadership and you keep working those correct decisions, you get those compounding benefits. And team building can absolutely be one of those as well. Um, the, I have one more thing in regards to team building, but I'm gonna call out for questions. Any questions, anything that's been bugging you this week, it doesn't have to be about team building. It'd be any leadership management questions that you have, drop them down in the comment section. I have just one more thing in regards to team building that I really kind of wanted to hit on. And that is, you know, we talked about um, modeling teamwork and how you play a role in that. What I also recommend is utilizing your position to foster a little bit more teamwork by directing people to subject matter experts in a particular area. So people come to you as the leader with questions. Instead of answering that question, bring somebody else into the conversation. You know, that's a good question. Um, let me bring Cameron in because we just dealt with that with one of his customers last week. Cameron, can you help um, you know Nick here with, with his particular situation? So you're putting people together and you're teaching them to see their other team members as a resource. Again, so much of sporting events is the team backing each other up and being a resource and getting help when they need it. It doesn't have to be the leader that's doing that. I say all the time, I can walk into an operation and within 10 minutes I can spot the leader in a particular department. And it isn't often the person that's sitting over in, in their office. It's often the person that's out on the floor because that's the person that everybody goes to when they have questions. That's the person everybody goes to when there's a crisis or a problem. They go to the person that's gonna fix those sorts of things. And that's a huge aspect of leadership, but you can actually direct that sort of teamwork yourself by not being the person that answers every single question, but you direct them to people that can answer that particular question. Charlene, so good to see you here. I'm gonna be wrapping up here, but you can catch the replay of this. It was a good discussion, team building, and a whole bunch of other questions that we had here. Um, but if you have a question, Charlene, drop it down in the comment section, and I will tackle that on tomorrow's episode. Again, if you're coming to it late, you can watch the replay on Facebook, on YouTube and on my podcast as well. And if you have any questions that you don't wanna do in a public environment, 
You can email me, cm at cameronmorrissey.com or direct message me on Facebook and I'll be happy to keep you anonymous and I will address it in tomorrow's episode of Mentor Minutes. Everybody take care out there. You have a good rest of this week and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.